Hey friends, I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. It's no secret that I love my crock pot. I cook in it pretty much every week and I love knowing I'm going to have a yummy hot dinner waiting at the end of the day. I am so excited to share these new five ingredient dump and go crock pot meals with you. When you see and taste these, you just won't believe the payoff you're getting with such little effort. So let's get started. Friends, we have been blessed today. I want you to look at these delicious pork chops right here. There's some nice thick ones. My mom brought these over to me. This is some stuff my dad wanted at the turkey shoot, and it needs to be cooked and eaten. What a blessing. <laughs> so she took some out for them and brought us some. So that is the perfect excuse to make this creamy smothered crock pot pork chop meal. And this is all that goes in it. It is super easy and super delicious. The first thing I always do is spray my crock pot just to try to keep anything from sticking. And I'm gonna put in one can of cream of chicken soup. And the low sodium soup, it'd be perfect in this if you have that. I'm also gonna put in about a cup of chicken broth. I'm gonna sprinkle in a one envelope of the dry onion soup mix. Also gonna sprinkle in one envelope of pork gravy. Now, if you just had chicken gravy, that would be okay. I was lucky and I did have that pork gravy in my pantry. I thought I was gonna have to use chicken though and that would work fine. Now, let's season up both sides of these pork chops and I'm only using black pepper and just a little bit of garlic powder. I mentioned if you had the low sodium soup, that was good to use in this. And it definitely is because all those little envelopes of seasonings, they have a lot of salt in them. So you really don't need any additional salt. Now we have all that creamy mixture mixed together down in there. We've got our pork chops seasoned up real nice. And we're just gonna kind of nestle them down in here under this gravy. You can definitely use a bone-in pork chop if you have that. They have a lot of flavor in them, but I just really like to use boneless meat. That's just a personal preference that I have. I don't know if it's just from years of the kids. That's what they liked. <laughs> so I'm just gonna turn this on low and I'm gonna cook it about six hours. You can cook it on high, but if you can cook it longer on low, it just makes these chops so tender. It's been about six hours. This looks absolutely delicious. Gravy looks pretty good. Oh, the pork chops look great. But I am gonna thicken it up just a little bit. I've got just a little slurry here of some cornstarch and water. Kinda swirl it around in here a little bit. I'll put the lid back on it and while I'm waiting for my green beans to finish and stuff, this will thicken our gravy right up. I forgot to tell y'all, I have also made this with just a can of cream of chicken soup and an envelope of ranch seasoning. That is also very, very good. It gives it a little bit of twang. But I just wanted creamy home style pork chops tonight. If you've been here before, you've seen this. If not, maybe this will give you a little uh, easy weeknight instant mashed potato hack but the way that I do these I like these little envelopes that come like this and you're supposed to boil two cups of water I boil one and a half cups of water then I add in a half a cup of milk or whipping cream or heavy cream just whatever I have and it's yellow because I did melt my butter down in there then I just stir in my potatoes and kind of let them set up. And I like these, these are these little buttery selects and they got the skins in them. But putting that heavy cream in them or milk in them instead of just all water really helps doctor them up a little bit. After they've had just a little bit of time to set up, you can see how nice and creamy they look. I don't even think I need to add any extra butter to that, but I will hit it with a little salt and pepper. And yes, I can make homemade mashed potatoes. I've done that before on here. But you know, I had a quick, easy meal with this crock pot deal. 
and I had things that I needed to get done this afternoon. Look how pretty those look. I will put just a little bit of butter on top just to get melted down and be pretty. And you know what? There's no problem with instant mashed potatoes with me. And if I have leftovers, I can fry potato cakes out of them because instant mashed potatoes make the best potato cakes. And I'm trying to get this done before my Bible study tonight and actually get my kitchen cleaned up before. So I'm not going to sacrifice that to peel potatoes. And it had been so long since we had crescent rolls, just as crescent rolls with a meal. I forgot how much we like them just like that. Seems like I'm always turning them into something else. But this is definitely one of my favorite dump and go crock pot meals. Total comfort food at its best. Mashed potatoes, gravy, green beans, all the fixings. And cooking these in the crock pot, they are so fork tender. And it is just so full of flavor from so few ingredients. This is one that I always like to pull out. I know everyone likes it. And it is so simple, yet so delicious. Oh, friends, I am excited about this. We're making a French onion chicken dinner in the crock pot. This is all you need plus some cheese that will come in in just a little bit when we're done. The first thing I'm gonna do is just slice my onion. I'm gonna try to make them fairly thin. And honestly, this is just a small onion, but you could probably skip this step since we do have the Lipton onion soup mix going in here. Just gonna give my crock pot a little spray here. And I have about a pound and a half of small chicken breast. These are thin, they won't take maybe six or eight hours to cook, even on low. Next, I'm just gonna break apart these onions over the top, and I'm not putting any salt or pepper or anything in here because we're gonna have the onion soup mix and the French onion condensed soup, and all of that is gonna have plenty of salt and seasoning in it. And this is actually about half of that onion and I think I'm gonna stop right there. Next, I just sprinkled on this packet of Lipton onion soup mix. Just got a 10 and a half ounce can of this French onion soup. Just gonna pour this right over on top. Just gonna cover that around just a little bit. I was thinking I might put a little cornstarch in here, but honestly, I think this may thicken up enough on its own. We'll just wait until after it cooks to see. I'm going to put the lid on it and let's just cook it on low today for about six to eight hours. I just wanted to pop on here and say I hope you're enjoying today's video so far and if you're new here this is the basis of what I do on my channel. It is mainly quick easy weeknight type dinners because I feel like we are all busy. This week for instance it has been crazy. It's just been one of those weeks where it feels like every minute is filled with something. I haven't had time to think about a meal plan more or less get to the store. So I was so happy when I looked up and saw my HelloFresh box being brought to my doorstep this morning. It could not have come at a better time. I want to say a big thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. They're the most popular meal kit with more five-star reviews than any other meal kit and it's delivered right to your door. Taking the hassle of meal planning and shopping out of dinner time and giving you back time to do what you love. The day that my delivery arrived, Patrick had come home about lunch and he had a full afternoon of errands and appointments. I had been working at home all morning and I was starving to death. So when I opened my box and saw the recipe for the caramelized onion meatloaf sandwiches, I got so excited. The recipes are so quick and easy to follow, very little prep time, and each meal from HelloFresh comes with all the ingredients included. So no last minute trips to run out to the grocery store, and everything is perfectly portioned. 
all the ingredients are such amazing quality. I had the most beautiful produce and it comes from the farm to your house in seven days. So you know it is fresh. Another thing that I love is that almost all the meals from HelloFresh have a recipe for some kind of topping that is just like the icing on the cake. For this one, it was a little mayonnaise, mustard, horseradish mixture that went on the sandwich with the onions and wow it was amazing and it was just something that I would never think to put with meatloaf and sometimes I just get in the rut of making the same old casserole meals I'm going to try something different something outside of my comfort zone HelloFresh has me covered with like 40 recipes each week to choose from so I don't ever run out of something new to try if you are counting calories or watching your carbs if you have picky eaters you're just always going to find something delicious to fit what you need and today hellofresh has given me an amazing offer to share with you go to hellofresh.com and use code mail 65 for 65 percent off plus free shipping there's never been a better time to save yourself some time stress and money when it comes to dinner Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use code MAIL65 for 65% off plus free shipping. And thank you again, HelloFresh, for making this week just a whole lot better. Once that chicken's cooked up, I'm just going to put some cheese over the top of each piece of chicken. I'm using this mixture here, but you can just use plain mozzarella, putting a little bit on every piece of chicken. I do go back and do a little more. I felt like I was being a little bit skimpy on that. And then we're just going to replace the lid and let that cheese melt while we get the rest of dinner together. And anytime I have a meal with gravy, I think I have to have mashed potatoes. So I've just got some diced up here, left my skins on. Once they've cooked up, I pour the water off and then I just mash mine up by hand. And I mash them a little bit before I add anything and I just throw in, you know, maybe half a stick of butter. I season them up with a little salt and pepper. Then I'm going to mash them just a little bit more before I start adding any liquid at all. And I had a little heavy whipping cream here that needed to be used up. So that's what I'm using. And then I also had just a little bit of sour cream left in a container. So I'm going to throw that in there too and just mash it all up. I like mine kind of lumpy. And honestly, I have made mashed potatoes with lots of different things. Sometimes I'll throw mayonnaise in there instead of sour cream. Sometimes I'll put cream cheese in them. It just depends on what I have in the refrigerator and what I need to use up. So it seems like this little video has also turned into a little uh, mashed potato tutorial here. <laughs> but I always just taste them and see if they need anything else. And you can just season from there. This chicken was so good. I was so excited to try this French onion chicken recipe. And it was, again, so tender. Anytime that you cook something like this in the crock pot, it just takes on those flavors and gets so tender. Threw a little side salad out with this, and it was a total square meal. Again, I just want to show you, like, I didn't even need my knife to cut it and it has all the gooey cheese and that french onion soup has just soaked into it this would even be good just to shred and put on top of a salad this is another new to me dump and go crock pot meal it is a taco hash brown casserole and i am starting by browning up one pound of ground beef and this is totally optional but i had half an onion in the refrigerator so i went ahead and diced that up and threw a little garlic into my meat when it was cooking because i had it that's totally optional you don't have to do that but waste not want not it just added a little bit to it and i'm just taking a paper towel and blotting up any of the extra grease in there you don't want a whole lot of grease in this i am spraying my crock pot like i always do and start dumping everything in we're starting with a 30 ounce bag of shredded hash browns you want to make sure these are frozen do not let them be thawed out into that we're going to add in one can of cheddar cheese soup and a package of your favorite taco seasoning then we're going to take one cup of a mexican blend cheese cheddar cheese whatever you have on hand that you want to use 
at this point I just thought it would be a good idea to give it a little stir just to get it going then I'm adding in my ground beef now that that's warm on the top I just give it another big mix and it does seem to mix a whole lot easier then And then we're gonna take that second cup of cheese and go right over the top of this casserole. This is one of those crock pot meals that just does not take long. I cooked mine on high for about an hour and a half, and then I cut it down on low. You could cook it on low for four to five hours. And I want you to look how beautiful that melted cheese is. If that makes you happy, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up for me. This was absolutely delicious. I love a Tex-Mex dish anyway. And as soon as I started scooping it out, I was already thinking black beans and corn and rotel, all the things would even just make this even better. I served mine up with a little taco sauce, sour cream and green onions, just like I would a taco or a burrito. I just can't tell you how good this dish was. Three of us ate it this night. Then I took it into my in-laws and shared with them, and we ate a little bit more that night too. This is so good. If you like Tex-Mex flavors, you are going to love this one. Be sure and check the description box for links to all these crock pot meals tonight, as well as information on HelloFresh. Remember, go to HelloFresh.com, use the code MAIL, 65 for 65% 65 off plus free shipping. Thank you so much for being here. I hope these recipes will help you out in the weeks to come. And until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.